Eduardo Benitez. Como esta amigo? This video is for you. And for everyone else who doesn't know what I'm talking about, Eduardo asked a question over on my video, managing AWS EC2 instances using Ansible playbooks, hashtag shameless self-promotion. And the question he asked was, he just got a job as a DevOps engineer, congratulations. And it's in the embedded software field. So because of the nature of the products that his company creates, things like Docker and Kubernetes, et cetera, are all off the table. And he wants to know if this is going to limit his future career opportunities because he ultimately wants to transition over to DevOps and web development or in the web development field. And he wanted to know my thoughts on it. So let's break it down, see what we got here. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Will from DevOps for Developers. And so we're dealing with Eduardo's question here. Let's take the first part of it. He wants to know if, since he can't use things like Kubernetes and Docker, is that gonna limit his long-term career opportunities in DevOps? So my thought on that is absolutely no way. You know, that's a common misconception that we have where, you know, people think you have to use certain tools to do the DevOps things. You know, it's not like you've got a bingo card and when you check off all the boxes in a certain direction, you're doing DevOps, right? It doesn't work like that. So I kind of see where he's coming from though, given that he's in embedded software and I don't really know which part of embedded software he's in. You know, it could be something like um, manufacturing printers or GPS units that go in uh, cars or, you know, even some really wild stuff like uh, rain gauges that are used by farmers to determine whether or not they need to um, water the crops. We don't really have that information, but in any case, you can still do DevOps, right? Because you want to step back and say, okay, what's our company really doing? Obviously making some embedded software products, which means there are some programmers or developers somewhere writing code for this. And so you wanna look and like ask yourself, what's the bottleneck between getting the code from the developer's workstation out to these embedded devices? And now actually I think you're gonna be a little better off starting out this way because here's the deal. Whenever you deploy to embedded software, like the deployment process has to be spot on and the rollback has to take care of itself should something go wrong. I remember, you know, years ago dealing with some embedded software type applications and buying this hardware and then you get this software update for it and the software update fails halfway through and completely bricks the whole unit. You know, that's a horrible customer experience. And so from DevOps, from a DevOps perspective, you've actually got the opportunity to influence that, you know, and make sure that you have a solid process for packaging the software and that when you deploy to these embedded devices that they can download the software and then they have the ability to check the download and ensure that the, the integrity is right on that and then install it, you know, and do some uh, internal checks to make sure it installed correctly, roll back if not, and report all of those metrics back to you and you can use that to help the developers build better, more performance software. And here's where it gets to like being the DevOps piece of that, because you're gonna measure that over time. You're gonna measure how long it takes to get software out onto these embedded devices, how many of them fail, how many of them roll back successfully, the length of time that it takes to install that, how often you deploy, all of those kinds of things and you want to try to improve those numbers. So now when you make the transition and you jump over to web development and they say, well, tell me about your DevOps experience, you can say, well, let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about how we deployed to 10,000 devices per day automated that we absolutely could not fail on or it completely bricked the device. That's something that every employer who deploys software 
is going to be interested in whether they can roll back easily or not. Meanwhile, as you're doing that, you know, you of course still want to be working on updating your skills, learning Kubernetes or AWS, Azure, Docker, all of those types of skills that you're going to need whenever you do transition to web development and make sure that you've got those ready to go as well. And you'll be looking like a really solid candidate whenever you're ready to make that transition. So thanks for leaving a comment on the channel and I hope that was helpful for you. I hope it was helpful for everyone else watching as well. And just if you didn't know it, I actually wrote a book, The DevOps Career Guide. So it's available. I'll put a link down below. But as you can tell, it's pretty small. You know, there's not a, not a big commitment to read this thing, but there's a lot of good information in it. Because what I did was just thought back to my career and all the things that I've used for DevOps and all the things that I haven't used for DevOps and kind of combined it into one high level guide so that if you're just getting started in DevOps, you kind of get some insight as to what it's going to look like once you start doing this and years down the road and make sure that this is the right career path for you. So not only do I cover the technical skills that you're going to be using, but I also cover the soft skills because I think they might be more important than the, uh, the technical skills that you need. So you can order this on Amazon. I'll put a link down below and you can, um, you can get paper or you might want to check out the Kindle version as well. So be sure and check that out and uh, thanks for watching.